gentlemen, and welcome to the Seneca Times 2000 My name is Seneca Times. Here's how the game is played. We're going to go four rounds. We'll have ten questions in each round. The first round is the easy round. All the questions are relatively easy. Round number two, the 50-50 round. Round number three, the wild card round. And round number four is the impossible round. It is a written test, not an oral exam. When you're playing or not playing, please do not shut out the answers. Please do not shut out the answers. Also, the use of cellular telephones, Blackberries, iPhones, and other electronic devices is strictly prohibited. Put a team name at the top of your paper. Please put a team name at the top of your paper. And let's begin. Question number one. In the U.S., the first Harry Potter was called Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. What kind of stone was it in the British version? Number two, what is the only number whose letters appear in alphabetical order? On what does a lever balance? What is the largest room in the game of Clue? What is the French term? According to James Bond, this type of knot. What state will you find the world's tallest tree? Um, my name's uh, Pat Hines. Uh, my real job at daytime is uh, teaching. Uh, I hail in at uh, All Girls Catholic High School here in Philadelphia, but my nighttime job is a quiz out. So. And I had that first, college and everything like that. I started here at the New Deck. And what you would get would be kids from all over the country who would come here to play. When we first started here at the New Deck, for the first year, our, our entire uh, crowd was Irish and English. No Americans played. First one, we had to go around to every single table and explain to them what the game was. And everybody was up for it eventually, but uh, it took a long time. And we used to, that, that was the first six months. I would never have the patience for it now. No way. So could you explain to us the rules of Quizzo, how it works? Okay. Quizzo is a general knowledge to be a game. Four rounds of ten questions each for each round. You're supplied with a sheet and pencil. Um, we call trivia questions. You and your teammates will get together, write down the correct answers, you hope. At the end of each round, turn those sheets in. Uh, we'll mark them, read out the correct answers, and give you your scores. Scoring goes this way. You get one point for each correct answer. No points are taken off for wrong answers. So take a guess from the ball. One never knows. Also, keep in mind the use of cellular telephones. Blackberries, iPhones, and other electronic devices are strictly prohibited. Put a team name at the top of your paper. Please put the team name and let's begin. Question number one, who performed the only duo with Michael Jackson on the Thriller album? A mixture of iced tea and lemonade gives you a drink named after what famous golfer? This brewing company wants half of yards just released its first beer. On what show did Lauren Clary sabotage her marriage last week? What are the microscopic blood vessels that connect arteries and veins? Who wrote Ken Deed? In the opening sequence of the Brady Bunch, which character is in the middle square? What type of animals did Diane Fossey work with? All for one and one for all was the motto for what group? I moved to Philly, I guess it was October 2001. Um, started uh, waiting tables. I was making probably about 250 bucks a week. Uh, and I waited tables for a little bit more money, but I had to dress up in a colonial outfit at the, uh, at the city tavern. So that wasn't really, I wouldn't characterize that as a highlight of my life. Uh, I guess a few months after I moved here, um, went out to grab a drink at the Dark Horse, which at the time was the Dickens Inn, with a couple friends. Uh, Irish John was hosting Quizzo, and I had never seen anything like it. And he was uh, meaner than hell. So <laughs> it's like, wow. I was like, I should do one of these, but you know, be nice. Every day, Irish people call it table quiz. I have no idea why, because people play at the bar. I, I have no idea what it means. I think it came, came from, you used to have to pay per table a fee, but anyway. This is dead serious. One night we were sitting there and this old woman came in. She used to come in at a bar all the time for a, a six pack of beer. Lower High Life. 
and uh, she came in one night. We were all playing. Uh, we were all playing quiz. It was a bonus round. Everyone bent over. It wasn't a picture round. It was. Uh, it was written. So everyone sort of bent over and they're talking. And then she walks in and is this bingo? And my partner, this guy named Sean McLaughlin, said, no, it's Quizzo. And that was it. Uh, every time, ever since then, we just called it Quizzo. And so what would happen is, you, I, I never, didn't hear about Quizzo, but you'd have people come up to you and say, oh, I played something like this in San Francisco, or I played something like this in New York. And they were all in, um, you know, expat bars. It was, you know, it wasn't, as far as I know, we started here doing the quiz here in 19, I think 1992. Uh, as far as I know, there was no nobody doing quiz, quiz for Americans. You know, I'll never lay claim to the first pub quiz in the United States, but I think we were the first that I heard of to do it for Americans. Now, I had had a sports radio show at that time that I was basically paying to be on, and I was like, oh, this would be a good way to make money for advertising for the radio show, is to do a sports quiz -o. So I started doing a couple sports quiz -os, and after a while I was like, you know, the hell with the radio show. You know, I just make the money from the... Uh, from the quizos. Philly, one thing I love about this city is that it's very um, independent-minded, and so I think if uh, I think if like a corporation had come in and like started this trend, I don't think it would have been nearly as popular as it is now because I think it would have been something that would have been fun for a while, but then people would have kind of gotten over. Whereas now you got like, okay, who do you like better, Irish John or Pat Hines or Johnny Goodtimes or, you know, you've got your regulars that are there every week and they see each other every week and, that, you know, eventually they're going to strike up a conversation and, and, and so, you know, you get a lot of people that are just meeting each other through, um, you know, through this because... Um, you know, they're seeing each other at the same time, at the same place every week. You know, that, that kind of helps define, I think, a community. Um, I think I do it in a very traditional way. If you were, if you were to go to Ireland or England, you'd see quiz are very serious, uh, for the most part, especially the, the quiz masters. There's not a lot of, um, there's not even a lot of joking around. There's not a lot of banter between the quiz master and crowd. It's rapid fire question. I mean, it, it, you would see a quiz in Ireland or England that would be, you know, 10 rounds of 8 questions each, an 80 question quiz, no problem. And, and no one would think to uh, question the quiz master or, or go up to him in, in the middle of a round, you know. I've loosened that up a little bit, but uh, it's funny, the, 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 uh, we, didn't start get, we didn't start getting disrespect until the Americans started playing. You know, the Irish and English just took their medicine, you know, and, you know, even if we had a, even if we had a question that might have been wrong or ambiguous, they'd come up and go, excuse me, I hate to bother you, but, you know, and then, you know, the Americans come, you're wrong, you're wrong. Do you think that's Philadelphia Americans, or? <laughs> well, <laughs> that's my own experience, but uh, I, it's, it's young. It's, you know, when, when students are playing, uh, I think it's Penn, too. They're so competitive, you know. Uh, either of you guys go to Penn? All right, so I'm uh, uh, Eric Swanson, and I'm a research specialist at the University of Pennsylvania. I do a neuropathology research. Sofa Kingdom started um, as, uh, as we were all graduating. Uh, I had yet to, uh, to get a job. Um, I, I'm from Illinois initially, but um, knew that I wanted to stay out in Philadelphia after graduating. So I um, was looking for gainful employment and uh, didn't really have uh, much to do besides playing Quizzo. I mean, we won fairly regularly, so we were like, hey, we could make a reputation for ourselves. We were thinking, you know, yeah, we, should, we should get our own team name and uh, we can be the team that gets booed every night at Quizzo when, when he reads off the team names. So uh, my, uh, 
My friend Anthony had been in a Battle of the Bands, and their name was Sofa Kingdom. And I was like, yeah, yeah, no, I like that. So, uh, so Sofa Kingdom it was. And uh, <laughs> it's a little juvenile, uh, a lot juvenile. Uh, you know, it's coming on five years that we've been, uh, been uh, playing pretty hardcore. Uh, started, I guess we graduated uh, middle of May, and then uh, basically beginning of June, we, uh, June 2003, started. And I think at that time I was just doing Nick's Roast Beef. Did that one for a while, then I started at Frank Clements, which was a bar where the good dog is now. I started at those two places, was still waiting tables, and then eventually, you know, picked up the bards, picked up the black sheep, and after a while I was like, wow, I can actually stop waiting tables, I can actually just start doing this and make enough money to make it work, so did that for a while, and, uh, and you know, next thing you knew, I was, uh, you know, actually paying my rent via Quizzo. Well, so, at, uh, at New Deck, the first prize was six, it's $65 off your tab, um, and, you know, the Bards is 40 so, uh, uh, we've probably, uh, you know, it's, it's up in the, you know, tens of thousands. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, uh, we, we tried to do the calculations once. I mean, it's, it's a little iffy, but, and it's probably close to, close to 15 or maybe in a, little, a little higher than that, 15,000, I guess. Like that 2004, I guess, was the first year where I was like, wow, this might actually be, you know, a living. Uh, to some degree. I mean, obviously, I don't want to, you know, be doing this when I'm 70. But, like, for now, it's, it, that, that's when I think it finally sunk in. And it was like, well, you know, in terms of a, being in a big city, but it's definitely a community, which, you know, I think fits in well with Philadelphia. I think Philadelphia is a, a big city driven by communities. And I think that, uh, I think that the Quizzo community is, uh, you know, kind of kind of found a, you know, it's kind of become a, a niche of its own. Um, you know, where people have something to sort of relate to, like any club or, or a social event or sports team or what have you. Thank you. Good, Janet. Boy, I think he's around. Review our scores. The Western Omelets going for their fourth consecutive win have 11. Discipline and Punish has 11. Sofa Kingdom has 11. The Hurt Bombs, who haven't won in ages, have 11. The Marketable Commodities have 11. Ben's Associate List has 10. Your Sore Asshole has 10. Cut Stat Flow has 10. Just a tip, just for a second, just to see how it feels, has 9. Urban has 9. Bottom of the food chain is eight. My girlfriend can't wrestle, but you should see her vagina has eight. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Forcer's Friendship has eight. And Far From Home has six. We move to round number two. We 50-50 round. This is the doozy. This week's topic, dead or alive? Question number one, F. Lee Bailey. Question number two, Indira Gandhi. Wilson Pickett. Art Linkletter. W. Mark Felt, a.k.a. Deep Throat. Linda Lovelace, a.k.a. Deep Throat. I. M. K. Nelson Mandela. And finally, question number ten, Robert Goulet. Robert Goulet. Okay, uh, my name is uh, Jason Garbowski. I've been a proud Sofa Kingdom member since the beginning. Uh, I work for, I'm a test uh, SAT tutor, just standardized test tutor. I've been doing that for getting on eight years already. Um, so I've got quite a bit of experience uh, with it. Uh, you know, so that's, that's what I, how I spend my days. You know? um, but you know, essentially, I mean, I, I read a lot. Um, that's probably why I like my job too, because I can encourage my kids to read, and so for me, you know, my reading is why I'm good at Quizzo because I just I just read a lot and I see a lot of different things that kind of stick. 
uh, and that, that I don't really do anything to prepare for Quizzle per se. And I never did that when I was in college either. I wasn't like a guy who'd memorize lists or you know think of trivia questions and answer that, or even play Trivial Pursuit, uh, or even watch Jeopardy. I, I, my all my trivia knowledge comes from reading. My name is Nate DiGiorgio. I am a systems architect for the Biomedical Informatics Consortium of the University of Pennsylvania. I think that's the full title. It sounds about right. I've uh, been playing Quizzo for about three years now, full time, uh, and probably five, four or five total, off and on before that. Uh, initially, it was my girlfriend that suggested that I come out and play. Um, I kind of ignored that. She she would uh, try to get me to play probably once a week, and I'd be like, eh, I don't, I don't really have time. In retrospect, that's pretty funny, uh, because now she tries to get me not to play. Um, but uh, it, was just, it was just a lot of fun hanging out with people, and we won all the time, so it was free dinner at the new deck most of the time uh, back then. Can't really argue with that. Do I talk to you? Yeah, or? go ahead and talk this way. Yeah. All right. Well, my name is Ryan Cresetto, otherwise known as Coob, which is a nickname that I got. Should I explain the origin of the nickname? Go for it. So, back in like late 80s, early 90s, there was a show called Parker Lewis Can't Lose, and there was a character on there named Kubiak, who I kind of resemble. So, once somebody in my college dorm just started calling me Coob, and it just stuck ever since. Uh, and my job is I am the house coordinator of this college house that we're sitting in right now. Basically, I do a lot of programs for undergraduate students, do a lot of administrative stuff, like pay all the bills and any other random things that come up. I knew Swanson and those guys from the Penn Band for a couple years, but I didn't really hang out with them. And then eventually, when I moved back to Philly from Boston, I, uh, I found out that they were playing Quizzo and just sort of weaseled my way in onto their team and you know they thought I was good enough to stay I guess they didn't kick me out or anything so one thing that's helped from playing so long makes us uh, pretty good is that you really know everybody else's sort of areas of knowledge if a geography question or a history question comes up, we would go right to Garbo. I'm pretty good at history, but a lot of my history knowledge has faded. I have been out of college already for eight years, so a lot of it, you know, when I was in college, I was a really a history master. I could tell you, like, who was in the Battle of Pristina in, like, 1389 and things like that. Like a football question might go to Nate. I, I, I would say my, my specialties are uh, sports, specifically the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, as far as music, like uh, you know, 70s music, 60s music, music, I'm pretty abysmal. Yeah, you know, Swanson and, and Coob are so good with movie trivia that it, it makes me kind of sad. I guess I'm the movie guy. I mean, yeah. It's <laughs> I'm a huge movie buff. That's like my specialty. And I just, I, I try to pick up things that I think might come up at a Quizzo. For instance, I've learned all the capitals uh, of all the countries. Um, you know, it comes up from time to time, so now I'm the guy that knows that. I, I think the way our team works is that Swanson's our general umbrella. Uh, you know, he knows a lot about a variety of topics, and what I kind of fill in is like topics that most people our age would not know, I fill in. Because again, you know, I have knowledge about things like soap operas you know, pop music, top 40 music, MTV reality shows. This is because of the nature of my job, too. Like, I deal with teenagers all the time, so, you know, to relate to them, I can't start talking about Dickens or Dostoevsky or things that I like to read or do, because they just don't care. Like, it's like, okay, the old guy is prattling on. We, we, we don't have a mascot. Um, I guess Coob is the closest thing we have. You know, uh, <laughs> perhaps Garbo. You know, he's uh, a... <laughs> He's a curiosity. Okay, well, the, 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 the three quiz masters I know very well are Johnny, I know Pat Hines, who did the Fergies and New Deck Quizzo. He's kind of like the godfather of, of uh, pub quizzo, uh, although it's, you know, it's a mixed metaphor because the Irish, Irish folks aren't known for the godfather structure of the family. <laughs> yeah, but I'll, I'll I can't think of anything better, so I'll stick with that. 
Um, and they also have Pat's the kind of a nerdy uh, high school English teacher, but yeah, that's why we get along very well. Um, you know, because God forbid people think I'm nerdy, you know, but like, you know. I was telling you earlier about uh, how the people, the teams you play Quizzo are, um, you know, these kids who didn't win anything in high school and stuff like that. When I, when I start talking about that, I talk about Garbo as my test case. I, I like this, I love this guy. He, you know, he's been, he used to come here, he came to Fergie's, and uh, everybody loved him where he played, the way he was down Fergie's level. But when he first came in to Quizzo, I'll never forget, I was sitting there doing a quiz, it was the winter time, and this guy walks in with a New York Giants jacket. Remember the kind where you could zip down the hood, you know, and lay it flat? It was the, the hood was zipped down, and he had on the two-tone hat with a little pom-pom on top. So he walks into his team, and he takes off the jacket and the hat, and I kid you not, he had on the dress shirt with a pocket protector. I kid you not, and I thought, it's, it's, it's like stereo, it's just stereotypical. And just the first time you heard him talk. <laughs> and he comes up and he says, I fact, the seats off, he sounded like Jimmy Stewart a little bit, you know? Pat is very much a, kind of a straightforward quiz. Um, but what he does is he gives you a lot of chance to talk out right answers. So he'll give you a question that seems very obscure, like there's no way you could possibly figure it out. But if you start to think about the clues and what's given to you in the question, you can talk out the answer. Johnny's much more of a trivia quiz. Like Johnny will ask questions like, you know, uh, what's the first state to secede uh, from the union or something? And you pretty much either know that or you don't know that. With Pat, there are fewer questions like that. You know, some people will ask questions that there's no real reason that anyone should know. Like if you're asking, like Napoleon's shoe size, or like how fast a, a, you know, deer can run. I mean, that's just not, that's more just everybody's going to be guessing, and it's just, you know, hey, you got it, it was a shot in the dark. But, I mean, and trivia is more, it has a logic to it. You can sort of work it out. You might not know the answer right away, but there's a reason that you should be getting it. The whole point of Quizzo is that you should have to have a reasonable amount of intelligence to do well at it, or a reasonable amount of knowledge to do well at it, but it should be something that, you know, anyone with a decent high school or college education should have a chance to win. You just shouldn't have to be like a nerd bowl or a trivia bowl, you know, kingpin to do well at it. Zubabal Aduyadej is a billionaire who has been king of this country since 1946. D-U-L-Y-A-D-E-J is a billionaire who has been king of this country since 1946. He is the longest He's serving head of state in the, the world. Person in the world. Yeah, at one time. Yeah, I think that's country the country is he the king of. That would make sense. I mean, you know, the Swaziland king's not that rich. The Soto king's not that rich. And they have the other king, you know, absolute king. So, a lot of people. Just you, Garbo. Just you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll be at least around for another 10 years to challenge. I'd say the Bards is probably the best quiz in Philly. I think Johnny Good Times is probably the best host that we've ever played with. And I guess all of uh, Johnny's quizzes. Such a great soft promoter. You get good, well-reasoned questions. He makes the quiz fun. He makes it fun and like cracks jokes and it always has goofy little things. That's by far the greatest number of women at his quiz. Good Times adds a little flavor to it. Plus, uh, we just like the bards. It's, you know, smaller place. We know everybody there. My name is Aiden O'Kean and I'm the, the bar manager here slash bartender slash handyman. I pretty much do everything here at the bars. When this bar first opened, there really was no other Irish bars in the, in the city. The Irish pub is here, but that's not really an Irish bar. So this is the type of bar you'd drink in Ireland. I remember Johnny Goodtimes, when he just for, first started started like doing the Quizzo thing, he came to me and I thought it'd be a pretty good air because it, it's a pretty popular thing in Ireland. I think we're pretty lucky, actually, because uh, our Quizzle crowd actually drinks beer. Because I know a few other bars in the city that they find it very hard. Like, they'll have a table of 12 people sipping on two waters. But our Quizzle guys, they, they, they like to drink. A Quizzle night is for a bartender is like waves, because during the rounds, when, when the quiz is being played, you know, everybody sits at the table, 
And then when it's in between rhymes with Johnny Good Times is uh, it's quite like the whole bar just go, all the all the bar just gets packed because everybody wants their drinks and that, that three minutes before uh, the the next rhyme starts again. It's pretty much the same quiz crowd every week, so it's almost like it's a little get together of the local people. Everybody knows each other, so it's it's never any problem. And like I say, they, they like to drink their beers, which is a good thing for us. The big teams at the Bards, which really has the, I think some of the best competition in the city. There's a team on Tuesday called Narcotizing Dysfunction. Um, Hurtin' Bombs, I probably shouldn't mention them, second they'll get all big headed. Hurting Bombs are probably you know our biggest rival, I get a little kick out of beating them. Uh, next, I don't like them, I, I, I love those guys, but it's something where, you know, the, 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 there's a little bit of rivalry there, I'm glad to beat them. Um, I would also say Parse's team, uh, the Western Omelets, a rival for us. There's the Jams, Magma, there's a team at O'Neill's called the Young, the Old, and the Restless, who's really good, uh, who are really good. I'm probably forgetting someone. And then there's this team, the Champs, the team that won the first two Quizzle Bowls, who aren't regulars at all, and just randomly play quizzes and do fairly well for themselves. Like, we know the teams at other bars that are really well, that do really well, and, you know, we, we talk to them at the big events. But I think the bars is the most competitive place because you have, like, four really good teams that are always there. Like, Narcotizing Dysfunction plays on Tuesdays, and, you know, the Hurtin' Bombs and the Western Omelette have been playing every Tuesday and Thursday, plus us. So I feel like the other bars, they have, like, one really good team, and that's it. So maybe we should go to one of the other bars and start cleaning up over there instead of trying to fight off these guys every week. <laughs> you know, we'll be at uh, a random, we'll go to a, a random quizzo on Sunday nights every once in a while. You know, they'll, they'll read out Sofa Kingdom and people are like, oh, Sofa Kingdom's here. I'm like, oh, those guys, I hate those guys. Um, but you, know, you definitely get a sort of reputation, you know, among people that play quizzo. We, uh, we didn't like that people seemed to actually actively dislike us. Uh, <laughs> At the bar, so you know we we you know made made friends with uh, with most of them. You know, hanging out after Quizzle Bowl and one time I was in Washington D.C. It's a place called Adams. Uh, yeah, or was it Madam's Organ? It's a really famous bar in the Adams Morgan neighborhood of D.C. And they did a Tuesday Quizzo, and so I was playing by myself, and I said Soul Kingdom was my team name, and someone who knew one of my friends knew me. He's like, oh, you're the, you're the guy from Philly, the Quizzo guy from Philly. I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> and, and we finished, I finished second by myself, so that's why he was kind of surprised. He's like, oh, yeah, you must be, because you know, no one finishes second by themselves. Uh, although I will say that that quiz was nowhere near as good as any Philadelphia quiz. Uh, the competition in, in other cities is weak. I, I mean, how can you compare to Philadelphia? Well, our, our city won the last well, all of the city versus city SmackDown spectaculars that, that Johnny has run. Um, so Philly has won all of them. Uh, we have also won all of them. They, they fell to the awesome power of, of the Sofa Kingdom and, more importantly, the great city of Philadelphia. You know, I, I'm sure there's some good teams out there. They're probably pretty good teams. There's, uh, I guess, a pretty big trivia scene in Boston. Relatively. I know Denver has a uh, burgeoning quizzo scene. You know, I'm sure they can win plenty of quizzes in Denver, or DC, or Seattle, or Montreal. Should I keep going? But, you know, I, Philly is, you know, far above the other cities as they, you know, as it currently stands, I think. I mean, you could say that we're the best in the country. You could say that. I mean, I wouldn't say something like that, but you could. And you probably should. But I, no, I wouldn't say something like that. Even though it's true. And, you know, I think Philly is, is where, you know, is, is the heart of it all, is, is where it's really just... Everybody does it. Every bar has a, a trivia night now. I mean, there's probably hundreds in the city now. Ladies and 
gentlemen, please give a nice hearty Philadelphia cheer to your winners. And uh, find a good time to put those spectacular champions. Fort Awesome for the third consecutive week. They knock off Magma 97 to 95. Uh, want to thank everybody for playing. Fort Awesome two away from a bounty. Hope to see you next Thursday night. My name's Johnny Good Times. Take it light. Um, and yeah, it was a pretty big upset though. They've, they've won, uh, those guys are pretty good. They've won the last three weeks, but Magma's one of the top teams. So when they came in, but they haven't played in a while. They used to be one of like the regular top teams at Quizzo. And like I said, they can't, I, I, can't, I think they actually, it was a recount. They finished third last year in the Quizzo Bowl, but still pretty good. I was like, no. <laughs> yeah, no, no, they were not happy with the results of tonight's contest. also has other perks besides the copies. Very questionable behavior right now. I'll pay him back, I promise. And we have tickets to the tonight for Quizzo Bowl 4. That is going down this Saturday night. The most prestigious Quizzo event in the world. Going down. Saturday night. If you and your team would like to purchase tickets, I do have them on me tonight. It will be well worth it. Guaranteed. You know, even though the jams and the Sofa Kingdom read about each other on the website, they don't ever run into each other, you know, so it's kind of neat that. You know, you get these guys that have been reading about each other all year long, getting together once a year and actually throw a couple beers down and, and, and you know, uh, shoot the shit. So, uh, you know, to be honest, I don't know what the nexus of it was. I think it was just one of those things where it was like, you know, what's the next level? I mean, now I'm doing this thing a few times a week, you know, wouldn't it be cool if we got everybody here together? This thing's kind of a, you know, a celebration of the people, you know, of the people that do, you know, support Quizzo or support my Quizzos throughout the course of the year. And, and, and so I think a lot of them, you know, get excited about this sort of once a year thing. So, you know, you're going to have your diehards, you're going to have seven or eight teams of diehards, I'd say, and you'd have 35 teams that, you know, you want to let them at least think that they have a chance of winning the thing, but you know, part of what you're trying to do is is asking questions that not just one guy on the team is going to know. You, you want to ask questions that are everybody, you want everybody at the table to feel like they contributed. With Quizzo Bowl, I'll be sure to have something in science. You know, I have science questions, but not every Quizzo with this. I'll definitely have a science question. You know, I will um, definitely have a literature question. I'll, I, you know, I'll try to be sure that all the bases of good trivia questions will be covered. I think every quiz master knows that you can't just pull cards off Trivia Pursuit. You know, every time I see a trivia board game at a thrift store or something, I pick it up because, you know, I, I'm always looking for uh, as much stuff as possible. I use, there's a Jeopardy archive online that uh, I'll watch reruns of Millionaire and I'll get a couple from there. And I have all sorts of, of crazy stuff that I use to find questions. Um, every year people ask, oh, can we just come and watch? And I, you know, the answer is no, because you need to have a vested interest in the game. Um, because, you know, obviously the, the bane of every quiz master's existence is the guy who shouts out answers. So if you're not in the game, you could just do that because, you know, why do you care? But yeah, for the most part, it's going to be, it's going to be regulars and there's going to be a few new people uh, checking it out. I mean, the demographics are probably about what they usually are for Quizzo, which is 25, 35, 25 to 35 years old. Um, you know, I'd say probably 60% male, and uh, unfortunately. And, uh, and uh, there might be a fair amount of nerds there as well. Oh, did we win a lot of these? I won one where we won a lot. Oh, <laughs> that's right, we win all of them. Um, 
It starts with the uh, the date right here. Then you know the various rounds uh, scores scores for each round. Um, the final scores, how we did, who was there, uh, how much money we won. Uh, you know, I'll try to try to note that kind of stuff. I'm gonna need a secretary. That's what we need, the Quizzo secretary. Oh, here you go. Quizzo Ball 3. So hopefully we'll have uh, one of these that says Quizzo Ball 4 and also has us winning. That would be pretty nice. <laughs> I, couldn't, I could be way wrong on that. It could be a really cool crowd. But I'm going to go ahead and say no, it won't be. It will not be cool. Let's review. Our scores in organizing dysfunction is 27. Sofa Kingdom is 26. Western Omelette is 24. Sequia Swatch is 24. Client 9B Sloppy Seconds of 23. Uh, I want to push out a Peyton Sloppy over the Biscuit is 23. Eric's Folly is 20. Chixie Dicks is 20. Fat Kids Always Win at Seesaw is 20. No Mean Chess, Yes Means Twice is 19. Butterflies Rape My Sister is 19, and Tranko has 18. We move to round number three, the wild card round. This week's topic, Pac-Man. This disastrous game led to the demise of the Atari 2600. What is Pac-Man Jones's first name? Pitt was not impressed when his driver played Pac-Man, saying playing a video game where circles eat blobs is hardly getting into computers. What was Kit's driver's first name? Question number seven. Oh, my goodness. Sounds like question number seven could be a weekly double. Question number seven will be wearing. Six points. I'll give you one point for the first three. I will give you three points if you can name all four. I think you know what's coming. What are the names of the four ghosts in Pac-Man? The legendary Blue Horizon is the number one boxing venue in the world. And we beat out Madison Square Garden, Caesars Palace, MGM Grand, and Atlantic City Convention Center. One of the reasons that we are number one is because there is no bad seat in the house. The building was built in 1865, and it was built for the nouveau riche of Philadelphia, who were not able to live in Rittenhouse Square. Uh, the people in Rittenhouse Square, they represented the old money, and as a result, they did not want this new money coming into their neighborhood. So they decided to come up to the north end, this was all countryside then, and build these large mansions. Following that, it was purchased by the Loyal Order of Moose in 1912. And in 1914, the Loyal Order of Moose brought the three mansions together in the configuration that it is today. It signaled the first time that white blue-collar workers had a social environment in Philadelphia. We also have in the ballroom the last of the pull-out bandstands where your big bands, Tommy Dorsey, Ellington, all of those individuals play here. So we have fashion shows, concerts, plays, uh, weddings, receptions, you name it, the movies. We have it all here at the legendary Blue Horizon. Yeah, it's a pretty cool spot. You know, I, I will say most of our slumps have been caused by like an, an absence of one of the core players. So maybe Coop will have a business trip with Penn somewhere, or I'll be on vacation, or I'll have my own business trip, or Swanson will have to go do, some re do a research trip. And so what happens is not the full team is playing, so we may lose two or three times and the full team's not there. Then it might take one or two more times to get back into the groove or back into, you know, just, just getting more comfortable again. Because when you don't play with your team for a couple of weeks, it is a little awkward. A lot of times, you know, when you're coming back after a couple of weeks, you want to make sure you get a big answer or help out. And a lot of times then, you, you know, 
your 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 um your filter that helps you not say dumbass answers is gone. So you'll yell out dumbass answers, and that will cause you to get questions that you should get right and wrong, uh, which has happened to us. You know, sometimes I've come back guns ablaze, and I'm ready to contribute, and I'm a negative contributor. Um, I've, I've, again, I've gotten better with that as the years have gone on. Gone on. I've heard that you're not going to be there. I will not be there, unfortunately. Um, well, he, essentially what's happened is that normally Quizzle Bowl, Super Bowl weekend, so I arranged my, my work schedule to be able to uh, you know attend on Super Bowl weekend, but Johnny unfortunately could not get a venue, uh, so he moved it to March 29th, and unfortunately I do a lot of business trips at the end of March because a lot of times when my SAT kids are off from school, that's when I can do the business trips I need to get done. You know, I'm a little annoyed that Johnny did it for March 29th, but obviously economics rule, and he couldn't he couldn't get it couldn't get it when he, when we normally have the, have the quiz. So, say la vie, uh, so to speak. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate. It's very unfortunate. Uh, he's obviously a key member of the team. So, uh, you know, we can we can tough it out though. We can tough it out. Uh, that is rude. Oh, it's Coop. Yeah, what's up? I'm being interviewed. Yeah. What are you doing? You want to do something like uh, normal people do tonight, not play quiz on? What do you think? Yeah, me neither. Are you still planning on teaming up with Western Omelette for the bowl? Yeah, which I don't really feel all that great about. Parsa actually played at Bards way before us, and he used to play with Brett and those guys at the Western Omelette, and then they just kind of stopped playing for a while, and Parsa played with us for months and months. So I kind of feel like we're the defending champs going into Quizzo Bowl, so we should have our, our own team there, but we have a depleted roster, so it was either, you know, try to recruit random friends or play with those guys who only really have three guys, and we have five, so I guess that's what we're going to do. Yeah, essentially we've subsumed Western Omelet, um, and so what's that? This has created a Quizzo arms race where other major major teams are trying to cut consolidate, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, uh, you know, so <laughs> yeah, it's kind of sad in a lot of ways. So how, do you, how are you feeling about Garbo not being in the bowl? Well, it's going to hurt. That's, you know, that's the only reason why I'm sort of accepting the fact that Western Omelet is going to play with us because Garbo is a huge loss. Like, he knows stuff about stuff that none of us have any idea on, so that's definitely going to be a big loss. So Hopefully the three of those guys will be able to make up for one Garbo, but I don't even know if they can. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on with the Sofa Kingdom right now. I mean, they've been getting their asses kicked. Yeah. And... And they're not going to have Garbo. And then there's like this like weird thing going on right now, with with them and the Western Omelet, where they sort of seem to be undecided as to whether or not they're going to join forces. So it's it's got kind of a uh, you know uh, NWA uh, WWE feel to it, where you don't know who's going to turn bad and who's going to turn good. And like I kind of don't want them to join forces because I'd like to see a new team, you know, win Quizzo. I mean, to be honest, I mean, you know, I like the guys for Sofa Kingdom, but, you know, it's good for business when people see that new teams have a chance. I, I understand, like, he doesn't want us to put together this super team, but, you know, teams from other bars do it all the time. It's just because we've won so many big events that he doesn't, you know, he wants us to have more competition against us, I guess. I mean, I can't tell him what to do. For me, it'd be nice if Western Island became their own team. So who would you say the top contenders are this year? Well, if the Western Omelette steps out on their own, I think they're a top contender. The Jams uh, usually finish in the top five. Uh, Magma's always really good. Um, Steve-O, uh, the team that won Tuesday, he's got those guys together, and they're obviously pretty sharp. So... I think those guys have got a definite chance. Um, I, I, th I think, uh, you know, I'm certainly one of the major contributors, um, but I think the real reason we would lose is because whenever we do lose, it's usually because we know the answer, but then we let ourselves be talked out of the answer. And it's always been a bane of mine, too. Even when I went go back to college or back to high school, I, it was very common for me to get like a 97 on a test, but it wasn't because like, I knew only 97% of the stuff. I knew 100% of the stuff. But I would talk myself out of one or two right answers and change them. 
And I think we do that too. But there's also been teams that probably are smarter, like smarter than us in the sense that they probably know more than we do, or you know, maybe maybe prepare for Quizzo, like they may actually do some of the things I was making fun of earlier, like playing for Trivial Pursuit, or you know, uh, like you know, going to Wikipedia and looking up all the things that happened on the particular day of the quiz or whatever. There may be teams that do that, but they may still not win because of you know of ego problems or too many too many chiefs, not enough Indians, that sort of thing. Um, so I'd say that's why we lose. But uh, you know, Swanson Swanson's put a lot of time and effort into this, and he's he's found some good replacements, I think. So I I, I still think we're going to come out on top uh, when it matters. I think that it's very unique that this is taking place in this particular uh, venue simply because uh, this b venue being both. Uh, an entertainment facility, uh, a facility that that uh, really supports education and knowledge. I think that just having this kind of uh, event here signals the kind of institution that we are in terms of learning, in terms of showcasing to the public uh, the great things that go on, not just the fist, but the head also. You know, I could be wrong, but I, I'm starting to feel like the bigger things, at least, are all coming together in terms of security and insurance and food and drink. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I don't know what's. I don't know what's going on. I don't think they've even got it figured out yet. And they've only got four guys so far. And then, you know, without Garbo, I definitely think that they're. They're, they're certainly not the favorites to win, unless unless they if they get Parsa, Gabe, and Brett from the Hum, and then I still think they got a good chance of winning. But if they don't get those guys, I think they're done. Yeah, so they sold their uh, uh, sold hundred ticket today, so, so that's good news. I think we're uh, the online sales are starting to pick up. I'm gonna go to Dark Horse tonight, see if I can sell a few there. And I still got a lot of people that I know are going, but haven't, um, haven't bought tickets yet. So I'm starting to feel better about the, uh, I'm starting to feel better about the numbers. I think for a minute there, I was like, oh, I, you know, I was nervous that the, uh, that the location was gonna hurt me, but it looks like it's gonna. Uh, I'm starting to feel like we're gonna get the 300. I think you know what's coming. What are the names of the four ghosts in Pac-Man? What are the four ghosts Pac-Man? Have you guys uh, figured out your plan yet? Saturday night? Can you do more team chemistry with the, with the kingdom? Well, I mean, that's uh, sounds like fight words to me. Now, here's another thought. Here's, a, here's another thought. I don't know if Art and those guys have their uh, full team yet. And they got a really good team. It's like Art, D-Mac, SmackDown, and a couple other people. They got... Because they thought Gabe was playing with them too. Like Gabe was like a high priced team. So keep that in mind too, because that, that's going to be a really good team. He's in, he's in. Yeah, yeah. He'll be in. Yeah. This is what Art's playing with. But in order to get past that level, you have to put, you, put yourself in front of Kate and then shoot the dynamite. Yeah. Because if you shoot the dynamite, Kate you just dies. shoot it, she she gets hit. Or if with you the try to shoot one of them, either Jack or Kate gets shot and you lose. Ah. I can't believe I got that on the first try. As yeah. tough as the other parts seem to be. Yeah. And then the John Mock, as he's leaving on the boat, ah. he looks up and sees the plane crash, blow apart in the air. It's like a freaking time loop thing. Right, like he, see, he sees ah. the plane crash, the plane. and then he and then wakes all of a sudden up on the wakes up on the beach, and the and woman is still alive. Back.
HavingAGoodTimes.com. And uh, I do have tickets on me. If anybody here is interested in buying them for Quizzo Bowl 4, the biggest Quizzo event in the world in 2008. That will be taking place March 29th at the Blue Horizon, starring Black Elvis. Let's review our scores. Uh, the Super Duper Delegates finish with 41. Bitch is the new black, finish with 64. Because it feels good, finish with 67. Please hammer, don't hurt him, finish with 75. Hulk Smash Quizzo finished with 73. We're all winners. In fourth place, the Western Omelet finished with 84. The Narcotizing Dysfunction finished with 90. So it came down to two teams. Came down to Lambda, 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 and the Sofa Kingdom. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a nice party Philadelphia boo to your winners. And Johnny Good Times for those spectacular champions. Lambda, Lambda, Lambda. Wow. With a convincing 114 to 93 win. I want to thank everybody for playing. Hope to see you next Tuesday night. My name is Johnny Good Times. And I like Congratulations on your win. Why, thank you, Sarah. I was sitting down with Sofa Kingdom, and Coop was like, oh, man, Eric, Steve-O is here tonight. And he was all shit. <laughs> because they were talking about how, you know, you play by yourself sometimes and come in first. Is this true? I play by myself all the time, but uh, I do, but it's never against Sofa Kingdom. It's like at, it's at the good dog where... There just aren't seats available, so I'll, you almost have to like reserve in advance. So it's just almost logistically the only way that I can play there, and the competition is nothing like it is here. But I, yeah, I had one like twice in a row by myself there, which was surprised me. Like there were some good teams there, but nothing like it was here tonight. So the kingdom is done. They're done. Yeah, so the kingdom. With all these guys dropping off, they're definitely not the favorites now. The fact that. Uh, they're miss, I mean, especially Garbo. I mean, Garbo, like, if I have a question that's covered in the Almanac, Garbo's going to get it. With him not there, that's a huge loss. And then now that the Omelette defected, decided to be their own team, they're not going to have that, you know, those guys. I think they're, uh, I think they're, go I think they're going down. I don't think they can win with just those four or five guys. This is my third, actually. This is my fourth one. Oh, you've been to all of them? Yeah. This is the second one. And how Third, you... I'm sorry, the third one. The third, the third. awesome. Yes, yes. And how have you fared in other bowls? Uh, the first time we came in seventh last year, we were third. Yeah. Came in second. Yeah, I was, I was first here. Like... Was a bowl. Fourth, second. Fourth and fourth second. 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 And, we uh, won the, came out beat the champs year. thing. We won the oh, beat we the we champs thing, win. which uh, was kind of like a quizzle bowl. And we won quizzle bowl three, so. Champs. We came in second last year, actually. We lost by one question. I think we were surprised at how close we were last year. So were you in attendance when uh, Johnny did his flash dance rap? Yes, we were right up front. <laughs> and yeah. how was that? He's, he's, a, he's quite a good quiz host. I think it's pretty awful. It's going to be hard to top the flash <laughs> dance. That will be... Uh, Johnny Good Times did a dance to flash dance. <laughs> I'm that calling some serious. kind of parody of Mama Said Knock You Out. That's what I'm that's calling. That's a good bet. Because it's at the Blue Horizon. Music, yeah. yeah. Well, good luck tonight, you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Thanks. All right. Good evening, and welcome to the legendary Blue Horizon for Quizable number four.
brewed the first batch of in Atlanta on this date in 1886? Question number two, in what number WrestleMania did over 93,000 people fill the Detroit Silverdome to witness Hulk Hogan body slam Andre the Giant? So many people think the term upset in sports comes from the time a horse by that name and defeated what famous horse? I don't know if you see Mecca located. Who was born in the state that won 511 games pitching in Major League Baseball? Which of the following is not the name of a space shuttle? Is it A, Discovery, B, Endeavor, C, Atlantis, or D, Voyager? What is what company makes Marty Dolls? This building in Westminster is home to the annual summer proms. They are annual classical concerts. WrestleMania 3! Man of War! Saudi Arabia! That was Cy Young! D Voyager! Royal Albert Hall! That is Mattel! Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we actually only have one perfect score at the end of round one. The lovely Ginger will now tell us what team that was. Ginger? That is the Dork Sided. Dork Sided with a score of 13 has the lead. Interesting note, I don't see Sofa Kingdom anywhere on the top 10. Which I know has tonight's crown a little bit upset. Hey. Let's move now to round number two, the 50-50 round. This year's topic before or after the Blue Horizon was built. Before or after 1865. Question number one. Tom Thumb gets married. Brooklyn Bridge is opened. Jesse James pulls off the first train robbery. Marx and Engels write the Communist Manifesto. Dickens writes a tale of two cities. Woodrow Wilson is born. That concludes round number two. When you are finished, please hand your papers right over here to the lovely ginger. Chip Chantry! Hey, who wants to hear Johnny Good Times rap again? Me neither. All right, let's get started. Halloween is the greatest day of the year when you're a kid. But when you're a kid, the day after Halloween, worst day of the year. Because if you remember back, the day after Halloween is as close as you can get to having a hangover when you're six. You wake up the next morning, your stomach hurts, you got a headache. 
You're half dressed like Dracula for some reason. You're like, what happened? I was bobbing around and I passed out. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm, warm quiz of all four welcome to the legendary win. How do I get a dress so stupid off the porch? <laughs> Pay for the pizza. <laughs> I stole this from the Philadelphia Police Department. They still don't know it's me. They got nothing to go on. <laughs> Your mother. Any Catholics here? Here, pass this around. Uh -huh. We're gonna make a collect phone call. Uh -huh. right, here's a comedian with very bad breath. Hi. Oh, give me a hand for the comedian with bad breath. Oh, I'm in a freaking new horizon. All right, let's review the answers for round number two, and then I've got some really bad news. All right. Question number one, Tom Thumb gets married. That was before. Brooklyn Bridge was open, and that was after. He knows a lot more than he lets on. Um, you know, a lot of times he knows the answer, but like maybe I'll throw out an answer or Swanson will throw out an answer, and he automatically kind of um, devalues his own guess, and he shouldn't do that. I, I think I think you know, one of our theories is that you know when you're the normal guy in a group around the dorks, you know you kind of you know start to think, well, the dorks must know a lot more than I do, so you know I, I don't know what, what I'm talking about. I don't. If we don't have anything, I guess go with like inherit the wind. Uh, was that really a movie? No. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's wrap up. What should we put? Inherit the uh, Wind. Inherit the Wind. Here's your judges right over here. And without further ado, let's be straight to the stage once again. The legendary Black Elvis. Did you guys get the movie? Jack Lemmon? He's not in it. 
not in that. Is he? Oh, fuck. Oh, God damn it, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Of all the fucking things that you could miss. Oh, fuck! No. It was yeah. the fucking legend of the Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Right. He was at the. Oh, God damn it. We should have put that. I never saw you. I asked you if that was it. You said I didn't no. Know. I didn't Biker know. Vance. Fuck. Shit, I'm sorry. That's my fault. That's bad. Ah. Oh, well. It was right around that time. Oh, it had legend in it. We knew Probably we knew should have put that. that. Fuck. I, I, yeah, I uh, never saw it. Was? No, Dan, you're right. Did uh, you see it? I did see it. He's at the very, very end. He plays like the kid. Ah, uh, shit. We should have gone with that. It made sense because it was legend and it was right around that time. I, oh, that's right when it came out, too. I, that's totally my, I fucked that up. Ah, oh, well. Oh, man. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I, I, I totally remember that now. He's the fucking kid. It's, I know, we should have. And I was the one that was arguing that we should put something with King or Legend. Oh. All right, let's see how you did in round number three, the wild card round. What is Jack's last name The Shining, written by Stephen King? That is Jack Torrance. Jack Torrance. Oh. Question number nine. Who had daughters named Donna Rose, Regan, and Cordelia Van, of course? King Lear. Oh. Question number ten. Jack Lemmon's last movie before his death was in this one. That is The Legend of Bagger Vance. The Legend of Bagger Vance.
Kagame is the really famous Portuguese wine. No, because if we erase it, no. I'm yeah. not getting into that. I'm not getting into that. Okay, the second. Second is good. Oh, 
that's what my SUV teams. Their trophy's bigger than ours. I want a big giant trophy. Damn it. Was it was it really close? What was the yeah, score? We, 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 we lose it by ten. We, oh really? We blew, we blew a six point question, Legend of Mega Vance. Okay. Yeah, so that kinda hurt us. Hey, they got a good team. Uh, yeah. Fourth yeah, they're place. good. They came in second they got, yeah, uh, yeah, last yeah. year. They almost beat us last year. Although although we're still trying to figure out how fifth got a gift certificate and we didn't get anything. <laughs> <laughs> Second place, which makes us the first loser. First loser. When you're playing against that many great teams in the city, and you come, you are already defending champs. Second's not bad. One or two questions is going to make or break the whole thing, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah. What well, was the six point question? Uh, How could I forget? Well, what was it, Coop? That would be what was Jack <laughs> Lemmon's last film role. Yeah, which is and in the yeah. Legends and Kings round, <laughs> and we put Inherit the Wind, which uh, was a TV movie and had nothing to do with Legends yeah. or Kings. Or, uh, right, see how I did here? I would have known it was Legend Legend of Bagger Vance, but yeah. alas, you know. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> he asked him on the phone right afterwards, <laughs> and he didn't say that. I didn't, get the, didn't, I didn't get the, say that. I didn't get the clue oh, that it was yeah. Legends and Kings. <laughs> You know, you, you think about other questions, you get distracted. And uh, sometimes you talk out of your ass. Uh, and we yeah, also missed yeah, so the second we, highest rated oh, yeah. TV finale after uh, yeah. Uh, match. Yeah. And, and we missed the Magellan question, oh. which was also frustrating. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't, yeah. Did you guys put uh, that like Bartholomew Diaz? No. Vasco. Vasco. Vasco de Gama. That's a fair guess. Yeah. That was the frustrating thing about the Quizzle Bowl was that like the, those you count the Legend of Bagger Vance question, yeah. the TV show, I mean, it's, and the Magellan yeah. question. We had narrowed it down to like the two, two answers. Really, yeah. And didn't put the right one. How soon after the crushing defeat yeah. did you find out? Oh, I call. I called, you know, as soon as the quiz was over. You know, I was very yeah. eager. Now I was a little drunk at that point, and then we had, we, had, we were defeated. I was thinking the the parking lot, the Ocala Ale House, going, no, <laughs> and my, <laughs> my my friend down there was like, what was going on? Did something happen with your niece or your mother? I was like, no, no, I don't care about that. We lost, <laughs> we lost the quiz. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know? you've got to be on like flyers somewhere, like a post office or something. It's, it's possible. How is that? <laughs> it's possible. See, I'm a man of disguise. You know, I, I have my glass up. Oh, oh <laughs> look at this guy! <laughs> favorite answer of all time, which was, what was the name of the first dog in space? Laika, right, the Russian dog, but one of the answers was Spotnik. Usually every year I do some sort of um, musical interlude myself uh, at um, 
I'm not really much of a singer, but, uh, but I'm uh, quite a rapper. Johnny loves rap. Johnny was a rapper himself. Scary, scary, scary to think of that, but he was. Uh, you know, it's like Vanilla Ice and Snow, but watch out. You know, it's like, you know, Johnny rapping. But anyhow, it's a tangent. He's actually not that bad. Like he, he's done parodies of raps where he'll rap to like the tune. He did like one to the tune of Big Papa, but it was like Quiz Papa. I mean, he's really the best out there that I've heard, at least from Philadelphia. Um, stuff, stuff to compare. It's just, he's got style. He's got it all. Have you heard his stuff? No. No, I haven't. Is that JGT? Yeah, you know it's gotta be. I went to jail once, but I was playing Monopoly. People always asking, am I blowing up? I guess I mean suicide bombers strap my rhymes to their chest. So don't disrespect or contest the best, because I expect to be fresh until the day of my death. Yes, yes.